Hi everybody, it's Elizabeth. Welcome to my video series. Um, this is going to be a little rough because it's the first video I ever made, so wish me luck. Um, but yeah, for my class, um, I am an elementary education major with a minor in Human Development and Family Studies. I have to take a course called CI 497. Basically what this class is, it's about learning about multi, multimodal literacies. Ain't that a mouthful. In a nutshell, what that means is as a teacher, you have to know about the different learning styles. There's kinesthetic, auditory, and visual. Um, for me, I am basically all three. I'm very auditory when it comes to English. I'm very visual when it comes to math. And for art and science, I have to be very kinesthetic or else I will not understand what's going on. Now picture this, you're a teacher in a class of 30, and 10 of those kids are auditory learners, 15 are visual, and five are kinesthetic. Yeah, that's 30. Math. Now the thing is though, is how can you help all 30 of them? My job as a teacher is going to be creating lesson plans and lessons that evolve around all three of those so that way all my kids can have the accessibility and the ease of learning and understanding so that way I can help them unlock their potential. So this is a very big thing for me because I have always wanted to be a teacher and I find this really important and I want to do this right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in the mindset of these kids. I'm going to learn how to do things visually, audibly, and kinesthetically. And the project we're going to be learning is watercolor. So before we get started, another thing I want to talk about first is this little video series is not going to be perfect. Um, I'm going to be learning a new skill and there's going to be laughs frustrations, mess ups, maybe a curse word, hopefully not, my mom's gonna be watching this channel, so yeah, and um, it's just, this is gonna be a very emotional thing for me, because I'm also taking up this hobby as a way to cope with mental health. I am a very big advocate of mental awareness, and I do deal with depression and anxiety, and um, Talking is very helpful. Being in contact with people you love and working on getting better is a very big part for myself. It's part of my emotional healing. But I want to find another way to get me more involved and help me find another outlet of creativity to help me get through some of my hard days, especially with the major as stressful as mine. So for this project, I have to learn a new skill. So I decided to do watercolor because A, I could use it in my classroom, but B, Watercolor is very hard. You have to be patient, you have to have the time, you have to have the skill, and as a teacher, you need all that. So I decided to work on this. So today is just an unboxing video of different things that I have to start, and then at the end, I'll put up a couple questions and ask for y'all's opinion. Okay? Cool. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the books I bought. So for $30, I went to a little secondhand bookstore called Webster's in State College, not too far from where I work, not too far from the Target, and it's right across from the Catabus Station, and <clears throat> one of my favorite places in the world. It smells amazing in there. There's records, um, like awesome records. I got Zach a original mono of The Doors' first album, it plays well, and it's just, it's a beautiful place. So what I did was I bought a bunch of books on watercolor, how to do watercolor and a couple like more advanced books that they had so that way I can have some ideas for later. So the first one is getting started on watercolors and it has basically, you know, about the book, how to pick paints, um, like choosing your materials and selecting your brushes. So like right here, making a palette you know how to do like different things so like blending and stuff like that and applying washes and different things so this is gonna be very helpful this one is one of the older ones and it's a step-by-step -step instruction and demonstration of techniques for painting flowers and still lifes and landscapes and seascapes it's from the 60s 
and it also has information right here allow me to pull that right here so it has different things like this so I can look at and it's how to's I'm really excited about this one this one I like to call the guy that reminds me of Bob Ross but is not Bob Ross will I become the next Bob Ross I don't think so will I be trying though yes yes I am but this too also has like a basic introduction how to do painting how to remove dry paint wet paint the works for this one, it's called Creative Colored Pencil Workshop. This also has information about watercolor, but also has different information about like other types of paint, like acrylic, oil paint. And the last two is just landscape painting and capturing the charm of your hometown. They're more a little on the harder side, but I mean, I really like the pictures. Now, why I'm bringing up these books is because, did y'all know that there's different types of watercolor. I have paint, which we'll talk more about, but there's different kinds of paint you could use. So by getting all these books, I can encompass all the different types of paint. But also, I've been using blogs and YouTube videos as well. So in this um, web series and the links, I'll probably put in the comments, the websites and the blogs I use so y'all can like look at them. Because if y'all want to join me in this adventure, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, I'm not going to be going too fast. This is more going to be like introductions, what I'm going to be using, like different paintings and the works. Is it going to be a live stream? It'll probably be a live stream. Um, and then the live stream will be like on Facebook itself. Um, I haven't decided yet, but this way we can all work together as a team and learn how to do watercolor. The next thing I have are cups so I have solo cups and I have jars I read in a blog that when you do watercolor you need to have something for your dirty water and then something for your clean so that way you don't muddle up the paints so I was thinking to myself why not reduce like prego jars and Dostitos jars and use like solo cups when need be so that's exciting as well the next thing is I have um, paint brushes so I put them in this little Prego jar. Um, ten of them came from a little pack and then three came with my paintbrushes. As you can see as I pull them out, like they're different like thickness and like length and size. So like some are flat, some are more curved, some are more pointy. And the majority of these come from Hardy Bay and they're professional paintbrushes. It talks about how to take care of them on the back and they're good for watercolor. Um, Amazon Choice what they recommended so I mean this was before I got my books which means if I need something else then I might have to go and buy them but if not let's hope that these work I think they should the next thing I have here is a little palette um, this little tray here is where I'm going to be putting my paints when I paint um, in another blog that I read it says to always make more of the paint that you don't use like use so if I'm doing a flower in this mixed color that I created if I don't have enough of that color I'm going to basically lose the color that I have if I run out it's gonna be really hard near impossible to make it again so what I'm going to do is when I paint this way I can show you all what I do what I mix and then that way we can all do this together as a team the next thing I have is this little mixed media journal and it's for acrylic watercolor pen and pencil. Um, it's a nice consistency for pages. Uh, it's very thick paper, so it won't curl when it's wet. And um, I might later on get a bigger one, so that way I can create bigger landscapes as I get better. But this is just for practice and different things like that so we can get started. And I'm really excited about this because A, I love the smell of fresh paper, but B, there's so much potential here. I mean. Look at all that blank paper, so much potential. I'm so excited. Last but certainly not least is the actual paint itself. So the reason why I bring up different modes of paint is because this paint comes in a tube. Now I've never seen watercolor paint come in a tube before. I know there's watercolor pens, watercolor 
um, colored pencils. And I also remember the Crayola like blank stuff that you basically put water on and you mix it and you just use it. So if I need more paint, I might try different mediums of paint um, later on down the line. But right here I have a color set of 24. It has titanium white, Naples yellow, burnt sienna, raw umber, green pale, gray, vermilion, um, the works. I'm really excited about that. Uh, a couple thoughts though that I will bring up because I'm a little nervous about it. Um, I read that there's no white in watercolor. You have to plan it out. So seeing that there is a titanium white here, I'm a little nervous about it. But I mean, other than that, I mean, I'm really excited. There's a lot of paint in here. Um, there's a lot of things to potentially do with this. I'm very excited about it. Um, it says on the back that watercolor, as the name implies, is a water soluble type of paint, which means that the colors are mixed with water to create different strengths of colors and paint consistency. The best approach is to keep it simple. The basic technique relies on applying thin washes of color one after another to build up variations of tone and color. And for lighter areas, whites and highlights, the paper is left untinted, which is why I'm like, why do you have white? But you never know. I mean, maybe the blog that I read, older, who knows? But anyway, the essence of watercolor painting is to start with the lightest tones and appropriate work over these with washes of color to build darker ones. So they say you need a good brush, the colors you need, and good materials to paint. And watercolor paint is valued for its transparency. The ability of light to pass through the paint and reflect back um, makes a colorful, wonderful luminescence effect. And it's ideal for home, wall art, scenery, abstract landscape, and fine portraits. So I think the colors I'm really excited to start with are really going to be like the burnt sienna and the cobalt blue and maybe the greens and the yellows. But um, let me know in the comments what we think we should try to paint first. Uh, the next video is going to be basic um, basic techniques and what they look like and how they're done. And uh, yeah, put in the comments what we think we should start first and if we have any questions. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good night. Bye guys.